Hello, my name is Dr. Marty Martin, and I'm a faculty member at DePaul University in the city of Chicago, where I both direct and teach in the Health Sector Management MBA program. I've been having a conversation, which you may or may not have been following, which really focuses on this particular aspect that I believe all healthcare leaders and organizations must address. So what is it? It's the integration of community health with population health management and care management. So why is that important? So many organizations are beginning to take on at-risk contracts, either through an ACO or other mechanisms. They're also beginning to actually even uh, have coordinated relationships, either through a full merger or a partnership with health plans. So as that happens, population health is gonna become more important, as well as community health. So what I'd really like to focus on for the moment right now are disruptive innovation and public health entrepreneurship. That sounds like a mouthful, and it is, but I'm gonna break it down for you. So let's begin with this proverb. To stumble is not to fall, but to move forward faster. In my work with healthcare organizations that are trying to actually put in innovation, innovative processes, structures, and systems, I think what happens is there's a feel of failure. And this fear of failure at the individual level, group level, executive level, doesn't enable a lot of healthcare organizations to innovate not only innovate incrementally, but not innovate in a disruptive way. Because they think the stakes are too high and there's too much shame if you fail. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you need to maybe think about things differently and embrace failure. So failure doesn't mean that it's an adverse event in all cases. Failure doesn't mean that it's a never event in all cases. Failure doesn't mean that you're gonna be exposed to a lawsuit or you know, uh, bad publicity on the front page of the local paper in all cases. Failure is critical as part of experimentation as well as innovation. So there's a market shift that's happening and you're well aware of it. So we're moving from a fee-for-service system to fee-for-value. What's also happened too through the Affordable Care Act as well as Medicaid expansion, an increasing number of individuals who do not have health insurance, period, or adequate health insurance are now moving into the formal health care delivery system. And as they move into the system, they're gonna require care, they're also gonna requir require management, and I would argue prevention as well. So let's take a look at the continuum, if you will, of services as it relates to sustainability. So many healthcare organizations today are primarily focused on economic sustainability. So whether that's in the guise of traditional for-profit, whether it's practicing social responsibility, think community benefit, or whether you have a socially responsible business. So within, if you're a mission driven, social enterprises are those that seek to get the triple bottom line. Triple bottom line, good for the planet, good for profits or surplus, and good for people. So what I really wanna focus on is that middle area, yep. So how can traditional healthcare organizations and public health organizations begin to embrace the social enterprise? Because as some of the Catholic nuns have said that have run hospitals for years, no margin, no mission. So some of you may have read the book by Clayton Christensen called Innovator's Dilemma, fantastic book, as well as Innovator's Prescription. So in both of those books, he presented a conceptual model called the elements of disruptive innovation. And a great example in healthcare are the retail clinics. So when the retail clinics first came out, the naysayers said, who's gonna go to that? They're staffed by nurse practitioners. Who's gonna pay for it? What's gonna happen with follow-up care? They're a flash in the pan, it won't work. All of that has proven to be wrong. And then what happened with a lot of traditional healthcare organizations, their first view was they're the enemy and now they're partnering with them by staffing them and developing coordinated referral networks. So you really have to think about if you really wanna move community health forward in either your public health organization or traditional healthcare organization, are you gonna go beyond incremental innovation? Are you gonna do something disruptive? So let's think about a core innovation process. So it begins with opportunity identification. 
I think all too often in healthcare, because we tend to be risk averse, is we look at the downside, what are the risks, and we stop there. But we also need to look at the potential upside and the opportunities. So look at both sides. Because if you remember, a SWOT analysis has what? Opportunities and threats. It's not a sweat analysis, so lacking of O or opportunities, it is a SWOT analysis. So once you have identified the opportunities, then you make a selection. I'm working with one healthcare organization that has launched an innovation process, and they have a number of different gates to really select opportunity. One is, is it a mission fit? Is it a strategic fit? Is it an operational fit? So if the answer is yes, 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 they select the opportunity, then what they do is further develop it, if it needs to be, step three, and then test it out. Test it out against a set of hypotheses to see whether actually this thing is going to work or not work. In the entrepreneurship community, they would call that a feasibility analysis. Then if indeed it is feasible and it fits and the test works, then what they do is they may do some tweaks, then they launch this thing, and they test it out and scale it up. So that's the core innovation process. Do you have such a process within your organization? Is it focused on achieving just mitigating threats or does it also seize opportunities? So there's a term here that some of you are saying, wow, there's a misspelling here. He put creaction and there shouldn't be the C there. He meant creation. No, I meant creaction. Now, I didn't invent the term, but I stumbled upon it. I'm not exactly sure where I stumbled upon it, so it needs to be attributed to the original author. But creaction is this, how to act in the face of uncertainty. So you are both creative, but not creative for creative sakes. You fundamentally must act. And that really does go with the paradigms of lean startup. It also goes with the core innovation process. So think about that. What are you creating? in your organization. So when you think about disruptive technologies within healthcare organizations and public health organizations as driving and shaping your community health interventions, I want you to pause on this poem that's attributed to Mother Teresa. This is a poem that keeps me going. So in the face of naysayers, I'll often reflect back on this and it gives me some fuel to be courageous and move forward. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of being selfish, having ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building someone could destroy overnight, build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous, be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow, do good anyway. Give the world the best you have and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. So I challenge you to do your best, not just for your organization, not just for your teams, not just for the individuals that you serve in your organizations, but for the community. Thank you very much.